Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session of the DEF CON 2022. I'm Roberto Carotala, and Specialist Solutions Architect from Red Hat. And I am Germán Montalvo. I am an architect in Portfolio Field Enablement, also in Red Hat. And we want to talk about predictive outdoor scaling patterns in Kubernetes. But first, we want to talk about a common problem or issue that we are seeing in a lot of customers and DevOps team. So determining the right size for your workload and estimation this size and the evolution of the resource that your business applications requires is challenging. Along with the different observability tools that you can have and, and the development teams can have, it could still be difficult to correctly estimate their application resources needs because this Finding, on the other hand, the best resource consumption of the application is crucial for defining the right and correct capacity planning of your Kubernetes clusters. And for talking about the resource consumption, we need to first review two different aspects of Kubernetes that are very, very important, that are requests and limits. At its core, the Kubernetes schedule is built around the concept of managing CPU and memory resources at the container level. So every node that you can have here, for example, is assigned an amount of schedule, memory, and CPU. So each container has a choice. So the request that we can see here specifies the minimum value you will be warranted. And also the request value is also used by the scheduler to assign ports to nodes. So a node is considered available if it can satisfy the request of all of the containers as in a port. And you need to remember, so in a nutshell, the requests are used to ensure which node is the best fit for the given workload evaluated in the scheduling time. So the requests are evaluated at the scheduling time. On the other hand, the limit values that we can see here specifies the maximum value you can consume. So in a nutshell, limit are used to limit the maximum amount of resources that a container can use at runtime. And also, when we are talking about the requests and limits and uh, how we can define it, we need to talk about about also the uh, importance of and also the quality of service that you can have and you better will assign to your different boards. So why I should care about these requests and limits? Because Kubernetes defines a number of different quality of service types based on how requests and limits are specified. We have three, warranted, the stable, and the support. The warranted is when the request and limits are equal. So these containers never get killed based on the... On the other hand, we have the stable uh, QS. That is a container with a request and value less than its limit that could or not to be defined will be killed after this effort containers when resources are limited in the users access uh, the request value also will be killed if the warranty qs container need to run in these containers and finally the best effort this is when we are not setting requests at limits at all and the best effort containers are the first to get killed when the resources are limited. And what happens if I set wrong or incorrect request and limits definition? So if I set wrong or incorrect re uh, request and limits or the limits and requests, for example, that the application requires changes, I set statically, but we have not adapted these requirements in the Kubernetes deployments of the definition, we can face or we will face these possible issues. For example, out of memory or on kill. 
containers are own killed because they are not allowed to use more memory than its memory limit. If a container allocates more memory than its limit, the container becomes a candidate for termination. If the, continue, if the uh, container continues to consume more memory beyond this limit, this container will be terminated and restarted by the kubelet, affecting our application. On the other hand, the, we can face also poor workload performance. If these containers consume more memory and CPU than expected and have wrong requests and limits, can suffer poor application performance for your end users. And also can uh, produce a wrong resource allocation because if you don't know have proper estimation and definition of the amount of resources defined in the requests and limits, this could be affecting also the capacity planning of the different clusters, making, for example, wrong resource usage and not following the best practices that you need to follow for um, resource and management and allocation of your workloads. So, in a nutshell, your SRVs not, are not happy at all in these situations because um, it's giving them more burden and extra burden in their backlog more things to take care and also can impact the different SLAs and SLOs of your applications for your end users, affecting your uh, end users' um, user experience. So what's a solution or a possible solution? Entering the vertical pod of the scaler. Vertical pod of the scaler or VPA frees the users from the necessity to setting up to date resource limits and requests for the containers in the pods. So it will automatically will uh, set the requests based on the usage and the metrics, defining the proper threshold that will allow proper scheduling onto the, your different nodes in your Kubernetes cluster. It will also maintain ratios between limits and requests that were specified in the initial containers configuration and will adapt the container's definition, predicting the resource consumption along the different time of the life cycle of the containers. So when we can use VPA, in which cases we can benefit from the VPA? From the developer perspective, you can use the VPA to help ensure that your ports stay up during periods of high demand. Imagine that you are in a Black Friday period or you are having a period that your different uh, critical uh, applications or business applications are receiving more and more load. You can use this VPA to ensure that your ports stay up during these periods of high demand and scheduling ports onto the different nodes that have the appropriate resources for each port. And also help to estimate the resource that your application will require during the, the life cycle. On the other hand, for administrators, you can use the VPA for better utilize the cluster users, such as, for example, preventing bots from reserving more CPU resources than uh, is needed. The VPA monitors the resources and that workloads are actually using, adjusting the resource requirements so the capacity is available for your other workloads, for your other applications. And always it's acting the same mode. VPA have the, uh, the automatic mode? No. We have three different modes in VPA. We have auto, initial, and off. Automatic mode is to automatically apply this recommended resource uh, on pods associated with the console. So VPA terminates the existing pods and generates new pods with the recommended resource and limits automatically. On the other hand, we have also initial that it's more or less the same as the automatic, but only it applies the new workloads created. Never update the pods um, that are running state. And finally, you have the off mode that it can be used and can be uh, useful only for generate resource recommendation for the bots, but never updating, restarting, or applying 
um, in uh, new pods when are uh, created. And now we can see an awesome demo that is uh, presented by my colleague Herman. Cool. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation, Roberto. It's really awesome. So now for the demo time, we're going to jump into uh, two examples. The first one, deploying an application without uh, VPA and how the same application is going to behave in an environment with uh, with a vertical pod autoscaling. So let me share with you my terminal here. Okay, and let's jump into the demo. So first of all, we're going to deploy in applications uh, in an environment without VPA. So in this case, we're going to create an MSpace, no VPA. We are going to ensure that we don't have any limit range, which is actually, we don't have any one because it is a newly created um, namespace. And then we are going to deploy an example application. This is a very simplified controller, which is actually a deployment with the required labels uh, and the name of stress. And then we have um, two interesting blocks here. The memory request is going to set for 100 and the memory limits is being set to 200. While this, uh, this container is going to use up to 250 megabytes, which is above the threshold setting by the limits, by the memory limits. So if you take a look at the pod status, you'll see that the pod is being restarted or is being shut down, um, is moving into the grass loop back off. If we look for that reason inside the pod, we are seeing that the application is reporting a known kill back to the kubelet. So that means that the application is saying, hey, I'm not allowed to use more memory that is specified by the limitations, which is the decided, uh, which is actually the decided behavior. If we try to do the same in an environment with uh, with a VPA, in this case, we are going to do mostly the same. We are going to create a test VPA uh, DEFCOM 22 namespace, and then we are going to delete any existing limit range. So in this case, OC delete limit range, and we are seeing that we are, don't have any uh, resource available. And then we are going to define the request of 100 megabytes and the limits of 200 megabytes. The application will use 150, which is actually between the minimum and the maximum, the request and the limits. So the application must stay up because we don't have, um, because the, the usage of the memory is inside the accepted value. So as you can see here, we have the limits and the request. And we have 100 and 200 while the application is uh, is still using 150. So if we list uh, all the pods, we are we are going to see that the pod is running because we don't have any reason to get that pod kills. So we are going to ensure that the requests and the limits are as expected. So um, it is 100 for the memory request and 200 for the memory. Uh, for the memory limits. And then VPA in this environment, we use the metrics that comes from the observability tools. Remember that the VPA needs to predict what is going to happen when an application is trying to consume more resources that it is specified into the, um, the memory limits or the CPU uh, or the CPU limit. So if an application tries to use more resources than it is assigned or that is limited, by default, it's going to get killed because we don't want to accept more resources. With the usage of the vertical pod autoscaler, we are going to use the observability tools, the observability um, metrics to get access to the real consumption that we already have for that specific application. So in this case, we are going to use OCADM top pod with the namespace test VPA DevConf. As long as we have a single pod, we are going to see the metrics that this pod it is using. In this case, 1,200 cores and 100 and uh, 101 me um, megabytes that it, this application is using. So we have to create a VPA, the vertical pod autoscaler. So first come first, the VPA is only available if you already installed the vertical pod autoscaler operator 
into your cluster. So that means um, that the VPA is uh, actually a custom resource defined by the custom resource definition, which is only available through the usage of the VPA operator, which is available into the operator hub. So as you can see, it's very similar, for example, to the horizontal port autoscaler because we have a target ref, which is in this case, which object is going to be affected by the VPA. In this case, the deployment with the name stress that belongs to the apps version one, the core apps. And then we have some extra specific block, which is the container policy. So I'm affecting to all containers inside the controller affected by this VPA. And then we have the min allower and the max allower. So that means that we can use VPA not to tell the application, uh, just assign uh, as, much records, as much resources uh, as you need. We are going to tell, hey, you can leverage your application using the VPA, but you are not losing the control because you are setting the margin in the same way that you would do with the cluster autoscaler. With the cluster autoscaler, you are uh, with the with the vertical port autoscaler, sorry, you are using the minimum and the maximum. In this case, we are using a minimum of 100 millicores of CPU and a maximum of 1000. And the minimum memory is going to be 50 megabytes and the maximum is going to be one gigabyte of uh, resources. So the, the resources, the limits and the request is going to move between these values. So you, are, you will never lose the control of the resources consumed by your application. So if we check the VPA that we just created, we have one which is the stress VPA. We have set the mode of auto. So going back to the slide that we uh, that we just took, we are um, we are appending the best or the recommended values for this uh, for the resources. And in this case, we have some columns, which is the CPU, the memory that we already have, and if it is provided or not. All of that information can also be shown into using the JSON path, which is actually the preferred way that the, where it is where the VPA is, is going to get the values. What it is important to mark here, it is the target section. The target section is going to tell the VPA how much resources that, it, that my application is really using at that specific time. So in this case, it's these values for the memory and one for the CPU. So if we get the, the, the limits uh, for, the, for the memory, in this case for our application, we are going to see how we have a memory limit of 200 megabytes. So we are going to simulate how the application, what happens if the application is to start consuming more than what you have in, in limited. So in this case, we are going to set or we're going to patch the application to use 250 megabytes using the stress binary. So we patch the deployment and we are going to change the value of 200 to 250 megabytes. If this happens on a non-VPA environment, then that means your pods will be killed. But in an environment with the vertical port autoscaler, it will take the VPA values, the metrics value, and the recommended values to adapt the resource to the newly values. So if we take a look at the vertical port autoscaler, if you remember that we have set in the maximum values, so if your application is start to using two gigabytes, then the VPA is going to tell, okay, just get the send, send the termination. Uh, send the termination for that pod because you are using much more that I am accepting to adapt for your for your uh, for your deployment. But in this case, we only need to increase this value um, in 50. So the VPA is going to look for the recommended values and then is going to um, is going to notice that you need more. Um, you need to increase the value. So if you describe the pod, you will see the VPA observed container stress and the VPA updates, pod resources update by stress VPA container zero, CPU request, and in the namespace, test VPA DEFCOM 22. So if we describe the pod, the new pod that we created, the one that is using the 250 megabytes, we are going to see how the limits has been set to this number of bytes, which is actually above, but not that much above of the value of the real value of the real memory usage that our application is using at that specific moment. 
So this is how can we leverage our application using uh, the vertical port auto scaling. Just to recap a, a, a little things, we can use the VPA to add flexibility to our application. That doesn't mean that we are not losing the control about what the application is doing. That means that we are controlling the margin. We are not setting an static value of my application have to use uh, 500 of, of um, 500 of megabytes uh, of usage at all times because sometimes maybe you don't need that much and then you can use a better usage of the resources that is available on your cluster. That means that um, from now in advance, we are going to give a margin of where where the the our application is working. So you're going to use at least this amount of resources and to match to these values. And then your that, that flexibility will give you to do a better usage of your cluster. So that's all about. I have to tell about this uh, this demo. I hope you enjoyed, and that's all. Thank you so much. Thanks for this awesome uh, demo, Herman. Also, um, you can uh, check the demo and run in your own uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, everything is in uh, this GitHub repo. Also, uh, we will share the video of the, of the session and the slides. And now uh, we can have the Q&A.